All right, guys, so we just talked about the Leatherman arc versus the Leatherman surge and ultimately kind of taking a look at the Leatherman arc from the viewpoint of survival. Now, let's take a look at this and talk about it from the point of EDC. Now, I still recently got this uh, multi-tool. It's still a little bit new to me, but I thought I would break it down and talk about it side by side, my current EDC multi-tool slash Leatherman, and that is the charge. Now, typically I'll run the G10 charge. This is the aluminum handled version. Either way though, it's the same tool set, so we're gonna just use this one as a stand-in. So as far as the Leatherman Arc goes, it's been out for a little while, and I do think that it is a pretty cool tool. I do enjoy the fact that it uses a very smooth system, as you guys can see here, very easy to open and close, kind of butterfly knife open and closes. So it's very cool in that regard. Obviously it has the fancy new Magna Cut blade steel that we saw on the Leatherman Garage uh, special, but ultimately, this thing definitely leaves a little bit to be desired. So let's talk about it from an EDC standpoint. So obviously I don't think that this is the best survival tool. Would not recommend this personally for survival situations. And that's primarily because with the Leatherman Arc, it negates the um, fully serrated blade and gives you a scissor as opposed to the fully serrated blade on the outside, kind of what I would consider core tools. Like obviously with the Arc, all tools are outside accessible. That's kind of its gimmick, but the core tools are gonna be located, you know, around the four corners. So the core tool here is a scissor and they have fully gotten rid of the fully serrated blade. Now, I think once again, in survival, that is a bit of a problem, but I don't actually hate that when it comes to EDC, especially because I will say they really took a lot of inspiration with the scissor from the Leatherman Surge. In fact, I have to say, I do think they did a good job with the scissor because it has around the same cutting length. Hopefully you guys can see here. It has around the same cutting length as the Leatherman Surge, all the while being a smaller overall package. So the overall size of the scissor here is smaller, but the actual cutting edge of the scissor is pretty darn close to the Surge. And that is impressive in my opinion. <clears throat> primarily because the Leatherman Surge is a much larger tool than the Leatherman Arc. <coughs> so, <coughs> so I do give them kudos for that. However, I will say the biggest ding that I have with the Leatherman Arc, and I, I don't fully understand why Leatherman seems to be incapable of getting away from their love of files. And this is unfortunate for me because files have to be one of the most unused tools in the Leatherman tool lineup for me. The, you know, just plain old flathead screwdrivers I can kind of get over because they can be useful in certain ways, but I can guarantee you with the Leatherman Surge, if they give you the option to switch out between a, you know, file and saw, and I have not once at any time, like outside of just playing with it, had I actually put the file into this multi-tool. So for me, the file gets pretty much zero use. And while I do appreciate it from a thought exercise standpoint, I like the fact that, you know, there's a diamond sided file to it so you can sharpen knives. It's once again, an interesting gimmick, but it's just something that I've never personally done and really don't see myself doing because I just really don't need to. So for me, I think it's a kind of lost opportunity because I would have personally liked to see a fully serrated blade as opposed to a file <clears throat> because I have in fact used fully serrated blades on my Leathermans as opposed to the fact that I've never once used a file on any of my Leathermans. <clears throat> All right, so that's kind of it from a EDC standpoint. Now, of course, the cool thing is that the the nice part about the arc is that you do have outside accessible all of your tools <clears throat> so that is a pretty handy feature now one other thing i will give to the leatherman arc and I, once again this is another thing that kind of surprises me that it took them this long to come to the conclusion of but on your flathead screwdriver as you guys can see here this is the flathead screwdriver they give you a cap lifter or a bottle opener now for me this is something that i really like because because while there still is present a um, can opener on this uh, multi-tool, I do think it is a very
very smart choice or smart option that they went with giving a cap lifter or bottle cap uh, remover because once again, having been in real life EDC situations, very, very, very few times have I ever found it applicable to have a manual can opener, but there are many times, especially if you are with more mature audiences, to open beer uh, beer bottles and stuff like that, you need a cap lifter for that. So for me, I think it's far more applicable to give them or give this tool the cap lifter feature as opposed to the can opener, because especially nowadays with most of, if not just about every cat, uh, <coughs> And every canned good out there, you have the kind of like pop tab um, kind of feature on it. So you really don't need a can opener much at all nowadays, unless you're just trying to be a show off or be cool. Um, you really just don't need it. So I am appreciative that they saw that need and put in a bottle opener on this guy. Now, outside of that, there's really not too many other tools especially applicable to me. Once again, they also added an awl to this, and I actually will say I do like the design of the awl on this arc. I think it's good. A lot of times, a lot of companies put that little like cheesy, you know, kind of slot in the awl to help increase penetration or whatever. I really don't know, but this is perfectly fine for me. It's sharpened pretty much like a knife and it has a very sharp tip to it. Um, awls are something that I can really take or leave on an EDC multi-tool because I do not really use them. In fact, I'm not even sure. Yeah, I'm, yeah the Leatherman Charge slash Wave doesn't even have an awl on it and uh, I use this thing pretty much every day so you know it's, it's something that I really don't personally miss so yeah the all is a neat feature and it kind of appeals a little bit more to the outdoorsy side of things or the more like crafty side of things but for me it's not really like a huge deal I'm not going to be using it much if at all so for me when it comes down to the arc I do think that there are improvements from the like Leatherman Charge slash Wave, because ultimately the Arc is meant to be the spiritual successor to the Wave. It's meant to be its replacement. So I will say, I, I do think it does a fairly good job and there are some practical things, such as once again, you know, replacing your fully serrated blade with a scissor. I think that's probably a good call. Giving you the cap lifter, which I think is a great call. Um, I really do wish they would get away from the file on these things and just, put back the fully serrated blade um, and remove the file because this file, like I said, it's really cool on paper and it's really cool in theory, but to be completely honest, there's not been a time in my personal experience in life that I have been like, man, I really need a file to file something down. And I'm sure that, like I said, everyone's mileage may vary, but I think a fully serrated blade would be more applicable to the majority of us on an everyday carry level um, as opposed to the file. So that's just me speaking. In once again, if you have different opinions or different experience, definitely let me know in the comment section below. However, I am still going to be EDCing the ARC primarily because, you know, I want to give a full review of it once I've actually, you know, used it a bit and actually gotten some experience with it. So I have already done some videos kind of talking about the things I dislike about it and the things that, um, you know, are present like issues with it, but this is just like genuinely how I think it stacks up against other tools in the lineup. And if I had to rank it with what I currently have for everyday carry, I would definitely choose the charge lineup first. The charges for me just make the most sense everyday carry wise. And then I would probably choose um, the Surge family next, just because they're a little bit bigger, a little bit bulkier, but they give me a lot of end user functionality. And then I would choose the Arc in third place. So I do think it's better than things like the Super Tool 300 for EDC. I do think it is better than things like the Skeletool, but I definitely would not choose it first. The Surges, uh, or sorry, the Charges or Charge family are definitely still number one for me. I think they're the most streamlined, well thought out, and most importantly, even though this does have interior tools, so it's not as easily accessible, I still think that this is the most cohesive unit, and I would take that lack of you know streamlined functionality for tools that I actually am going to use and enjoy. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.